Psalms number 62. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you, as a bowing wall ye shall be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but curse inwardly. Selah. My soul waiteth thou upon God. I'm sorry, read that correctly. My soul waiteth thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation, my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God hath spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth to God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thou renderest to every man according to his work. Let's pray. Father, in the precious, powerful, wonderful name of Jesus, we do humbly come before you. I ask you, Lord, that you'd help us tonight as we've prepared these thoughts that, Lord, you've led and guided our hearts to today. I thank you for that. I thank you for your help. Thank you for your love, your mercy. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for a place to come and to worship you. Thank you so much, O oh God, for these that have came to hear thy word. Lord, for those that are not here, that could and should be here, I pray, God, that you will deal with their heart. Lord, you know the need in these hours that we should be doing so much the more as we see the day approaching. Help me now, Lord, I pray. Be with the sick, afflicted, save the sinner. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to give us a few things out of this psalm this evening to try to uh, be a help and an encouragement to us. Uh, as I was praying there, I mentioned about the thoughts the Lord had directed me to. I'd actually had been studying in this area and looking at this a little bit uh, the other day and was, was, was pointing in this direction uh, as I was doing some references in some other scriptures. I got to looking in one of my old Bibles. I'd preached a message on prayer uh, a couple years ago here on prayer changes things in Psalms uh, 61, and then I've preached a little bit out of Psalm 63 on prayer, but I don't think I've been in Psalm 62. But as I got to looking at this and studying then this, and, and I've been in this study on prayer stuff recently. I'll be preaching a meeting next week uh, on prayer uh, down at Brother Fred's. We'll be down there next week uh, preaching for him. He's got a few days of prayer revival set aside, and, and truly we need folks to be prayerful more so in these days. So much the more as we see the day approaching what the apostle told us and what our theme for the year is, to do more of those things that are essential, those things that are necessary and needed. And prayer uh, is probably one of the most important because if our prayer life is right, our living will be right. Our uh, attitudes will be right. I was listening to uh, one gentleman preach on prayer, and uh, he made a statement. He said, if a man's not a man of prayer, he said he's not right with God. And he said, you look at folks and see, and I believe it, but Roloff said, when you look at folks and you see their countenance and they're all sad and, and all, he said, I can tell whether a man's a man of prayer or not. He said, by their countenance. 
You can tell by looking at folks whether they've been praying much. You know, folks that's been with God's got a little bit of a smile about them. They got a joy in their heart. Folks that have not been with God in prayer are the mully grubbers and the mourners and the, the sad of countenance folks. So God help us to be more of prayer. Now, when we look at this Psalms, I'm going to deal with verse number eight in just a minute, so you hang on. <clears throat> I'll be there with you soon. But in verse number one, I want to, I want to look at it and dissect it just a little bit. Truly, uh, my soul waiteth upon God is the way this Psalm starts out. And that truly or is verily, verily, uh, an absolute truth is being spoken uh, from the Psalms to David as he brings this forth. He says, truly, my soul waiteth upon God for uh, from him cometh my salvation. He is only my rock and my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. I'm going to look at that just a little bit as an introduction to this uh, tonight and, and deal with the thought on pour out your heart. When you think about pouring something out, uh, I really, I've, I've, got a, I've got a little, about three quarters of a water here and this one's plumb full, so I can't pour one into the other because they're going to overflow. But to pour out something is to give us the attitude or the, 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 the understanding of to completely empty. If I go to pour out something, is you know, as you do at the household, when you've got some stuff there that, that's waste that needs to be gotten rid of, uh, you'd say to the children, say, hey, go pour that out. Well, that don't mean come back with a half full, Right? That means to pour it out completely, to totally empty it there. So I want to deal with that a little bit tonight. But as you look here at verse number 1, I want, I want to notice a couple of things. First of all, you see the word, waiteth upon God. This speaks of resting. This speaks of confidence. This speaks of His uh, surety in the Lord. So you see the word resting means, means someone that has got comfort. Someone that is able to... Uh, lay down and, and not fret and worry over the things uh, that are there. Uh, resting to, 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 here's one that waiteth with confidence. He, he's got confidence in the Lord. He's able, to, he's able to wait. He's waiting on God to move there. And then you see the resources there. You see that his resource is God. He's the contributor. He's the one that's going to give or, or take care of the things that are needed in this passage. He's hence the supplier. But then also he says in verse number two, he said, He only is my rock. Now we could go for a while and talk about the matter of the rock, but I'll give you a couple of little things there to look at. The rock in one sense speaks of a concealment, speaks of a shelter. Uh, David often in the Psalms talks about how the Lord is his shelter. Psalm chapter 91 or division 91 of the Psalms, you, you see where he talks about him being under the shelter of the Almighty. He speaks of our Lord and, and under, under that rock, under that shelter means to be covered and secure. So he talks about his security there. He, he talks about uh, how that the Lord is, is not just his concealment, but he's, he's, he's one in speaking of this rock, it speaks of a, a combat. When I thought about the rock, I got to thought, thinking about the Lord and the rock, and I got to thinking about how that he, he through the years and through the, the, the many times of David's life, how that rock stood out. In, in Psalm 91, he's speaking of him as a, as a shelter, as a cover, one that's concealing him from the enemy. Uh, but when you read in, in, in Samuel, you'll see where David uses a rock in combat. So he is the one that gives him strength. He's the one that is his sword as it was with him and Goliath. So you see many different um, applications with the rock. You can look at it in many different ways. Uh, so you see it as a concealment. You see it as in combat. You see it as a cornerstone. When you study through the scripture, Psalm 118 verse 22 says, The stone which the builders refuse has become the head cornerstone. In other words, that's what everything about that foundation is built upon is that cornerstone. The one that, that's the main marker that's first laid and that's what holds everything together. So David is talking about the cornerstone here being his stability. He mentions one time about not being moved much, but then he talks about another time he's not going to be moved. 
and how the, the Lord is going to be with him. So uh, you see he's talking about this rock. He talks about this stability. God knows what we need in our life is more of him to give us more stability. Now, I've never seen a people so unstable as we see in the days that we're in. They're unstable in every way. Uh, they're not stable in their home life. They're not stable for sure in their church life. Uh, some, mo most folks aren't really stable in their work field. They, uh, they're not given to it. They're not dedicated to it. They're not, uh, you know, it's just whichever little way they want to go or whoever throws out the most money, they're, they're just not stable in that. Uh, you know, it, there's much to be said for a, a person that stays with a place for a good, good long while. Place shuts down, that's nothing that you can hold against that person. But for, for someone just to move around all the time, uh, they're not stable. All they're looking for is what is their own personal gain. Uh, you need some stability. Amen. Lock in somewhere, get God's will with it, and stay with it. Amen. I understand you, you may go through some places of learning. I understand those days, but you need to get as stable as you can. Amen. I don't like it. I, I don't like the moving around part. I probably, I'd probably, I'd probably more apt to miss God's will because I just don't like moving around. I'm not much about those big changes. I like to get somewhere, get settled, get stable, get comfortable. Amen. Might be why you stuck with me because I don't like to move around. Amen. So you see, you see, the rock here speaks of that cornerstone. It speaks of the stability. A lot of folks, what they need more in their life, every person you ever known, what they need more in their life is more of Jesus. They need more of that rock. They need more of that stability. And we can get that through the scriptures, amen? And God help us. We need to get in those scriptures. We need, we need to understand. It's, it's, it just it breaks my heart on one part, but it aggravates and angers me and, and agitates and... and whatever other adverbs I can throw in there that it just shows it just <clears throat> how bad people do not realize that they need the Lord more today than they ever have. But it seems like they're drifting away. They're, they're getting further from the shore. Oh, what a dangerous thing. What a dangerous thing. Might hear more of that real soon as well. Cornerstone. He's the, he's the one that draws us close. Now I want to show you here in Psalm 62, give you just a few things tonight and we'll go to the house. Psalm 62, verse number 8, I want to show you a little bit here. And I uh, hope you can see that good. I put a right smart on that frame so it may not be quite as big. But I wanted to show you that when you study uh, Strong's Concordance, where you're looking at the Hebrew or the Greek word, Old Testament Hebrew, New Testament Greek, when you look at the Old Testament words, you can get that Strong's definition, which gives you a, a bigger definition. You can see there where it says that H8210. Then following that is Strong's definition to the word pour out. You see pour out up there on the top, highlighted for you. That uh, H8210, that means it's in Hebrew and it's, and it's uh, 8210. So you see it falling below. Well, when you see that, you see that it's a verb word that's being used. You see that it it's a prime root is to spill forth. Now if you spill something it all, just about all of it's out of there, right? It means uh, uh, to mount up or to, to get it all out there. To extend intensively, to sprawl out, to gush out, to pour. You see what he's, he's showing us all of the different ways you can look at this word here. It means to pour out everything. That's what he's showing you. To pour out everything. So when I saw that in verse number 8, I want to hinge on that a little bit and give us just a couple of little thoughts in verse number 8. First of all, when you see verse 8 says, Trust in him at all times. Then it's got the colons there. You see that? Then he's got some more that goes with that same thought. Trust in him, therefore in trusting in him, pour out your hearts. Before the Lord. And that verse there ends, ends with Selah. Now y'all remember what Selah means. That means to meditate or to stop and think on this. Oftentimes, I guess the psalmist knew how 
our modern day was we get in a big hurry reading stuff and we trying to get through our Bible readings and get our get our Bibles read throughout the year so we got to hurry up. But he said, whoop, stop. You need to think on this just a little bit. You need to hold up just a minute and think about what was just said. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is a refuge for us. So first of all, I want us to look at the point of trust him. Now, a lot of folks don't talk to other folks because they don't know who they can and who they cannot trust. A lot of folks are uh, holding back, talking about some of the deep parts of their soul, the, the deep things in their heart that are, are bothering or troubling them, and, and they, they, they don't want to talk with folks about that because they just don't know who you can trust. And I'm just going to be honest with you. Some stuff you need to keep to yourself between you and the Lord. Because you never know. See, most folks will not tell anything until. Once you upset them, once you make them mad, or once something doesn't go the way that it suits them, then when they want to turn on you and become malicious against you, they'll tell everything they know to everybody. Terrible, isn't it? Amen. But of the Lord, the Psalms just says, trust in him. Now, see, David knows what this matter of trust is. You remember little old David was just an old ruddy boy, and he come out there that day to fight Goliath. He come out there, him and Goliath got in a big battle, and he and he whooped Goliath, and, and he become the he become the, the superstar of Israel that day. Everybody thought, wow, you know, they begin to sing songs about him. Uh, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. Well, I don't know if he'd slain ten thousand folks as of yet, but he'd slain a bunch. But he got that main one, you know, that was the big one, that, that one that he got, that one Goliath that he was willing to fight nobody else was. Well, then, then Saul thought so much of him and Saul was giving so much to him and Saul was doing so much for little David until Saul got jealous. And then Saul turns on him. Someone that should have loved him and cared for him all the days of his life. Because David made Saul a better king. David made Saul look good. The other nations knew that Saul was king of Israel. And under the command of Saul was a warrior, a soldier by the name of David under the command of Saul. He made Saul look good. And then Saul turned on him and tried to kill him a couple different times. Set a whole army against him. Turned the people of Israel against him. David knows what it is to have folks turn on you. See, David not only had Saul turned on him, but he had a son turned on him. David had a son by the name of Absalom that got so proud, proud in his way. Uh, all the ladies thought he was something. He was special. He was the best looking dude in town and it got him in trouble. He had his hair so long and flowing that he pulled it upon a beam, they said. Now, I don't know what all that means. All I know is it's too long. And that pride of his hair is what hung him in the buff of a tree. That was his ending. That's what killed him. His pride Brought destruction. The scriptures teaches us all about that. He had a brother that wrote a lot of scriptures about that. Oh, Solomon, you know, the Proverbs. Solomon wrote a lot about that. Remember, Solomon is brother to Absalom. Some of the things that Solomon uh, wrote about, Solomon knew firsthand what it would do to you. That pride, that pride, that pride brings destruction to you. So David knew what it was to... Trust in folks and be let down. I tell you, uh, it's, it's awful that around the Christian work that we have these things to happen. It should not be said in the Christian work that we would have anybody to fail us in the area of trust. That shouldn't happen. Christians, folks saved by the grace of God, reared up in good old-fashioned preaching and Bible teaching and Bible reading and good old songs, they ought to know one of the most hurtful, terrible things in the world you can do to somebody is to betray their trust. It's painful. 
to lose that. It hurts to have someone to break that area of trust that you have for each other. But it does happen, so be careful. Trust him. Trust the Lord. Psalm 27, 14 says, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. We can wait on him. He, he's, he's capable of taking care of everything. By the way, do y'all know that in our waiting, he's still God? You realize that in our waiting, he's still in full control? So waiting means God's not idle. It means God's busy doing something else. You may be the one waiting while God does a work on someone else. I said you may be doing the waiting while God works on somebody else. It may take a little bit of time for God to adjust their heart and adjust their attitude and get them in the right way. Sometimes our waiting is difficult, but it does not mean God's idle. He said, trust Him. Wait on the Lord. 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care, or casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. You can trust Him because you know He cares. You can, you can confide in Him. It's all right to talk to the Lord. It's all right to trust Him. You don't have to worry about it. He don't have to go tell nobody so He can impress somebody. He already knows everything. He can tell it without you telling Him. He knows everything. He's God. He knows all. Amen? You you can trust Him because He cares for you. Amen? Somebody that truly cares for you, I said somebody that truly cares for you, you can trust it's when they quit caring is where you get into the problems. See, a lot of folk don't don't uh, they don't they don't keep that caring uh, attribute turned on all the time. They get a little upset about something and they turn that part off. They quit caring about you because they're mad at you. They upset with you. There's something that's 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 turned in their soul. So so they've turned against yours. But you can trust the Lord. Psalms one hundred verse three says, "Know ye that the Lord He is God." It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We're his. We we belong to the God of the universe, the God of all creation, the God of all creatures, the God of, of Christ, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ and our Father because we trusted in Christ. We can trust him. He's never lied, never done anyone wrong. Amen? So you can trust him. I'm trying to get us to understand we need to pour our hearts out to him because we can trust him. Amen? And turn to him. When he he talks about him, he says, trust in him. Who's the him? He's talking about God. That's the one we need to turn to. <clears throat> oftentimes when problems come and, and our hearts are heavy and, and we just feel like we've got to unload it, sometimes we'll turn to the wrong folks. We've got to be careful in turning to the wrong folks because some of the wrong folks will tell everything. If you go read the story of Samson, you'll find some uh, good stuff about this right here. See, he told some folks some things to see how they responded, to see how they reacted. You remember when he laid in the lap of Delilah, and and bless his heart, he should have learned, he should have knew from his own experience. He told her, she said, Oh, Samson, I just love you so much. Uh, Tell me your secret. And he told her a wrong thing. Well, then she takes and uses that against him. That should have been enough for him to pack his bags up and go back to the house. Amen. She betrayed him. And he should, well, he thought he had everything under control. And, and she's such a good-looking woman, and, and, and it messed him up. Y'all young boys listening to me, you got to be careful of them good-looking women. Amen? They'll get you messed up. They'll drive you, they'll drive you in troubles. Amen? Amen. you got to be careful of them young, pretty women. Amen. Amen. you gotta, you got to... Samson give us some things there to to learn about. Samson give us some things to learn about. You got to be careful who you tell all your secrets to. 
Now, you can find folks to trust. Right. I've got one in the building that knows about everything I could ever remember about me. She knows. There ain't no secrets between us. I'm that kind of guy. I just, I'm, and I've told other folks things that I, you know, it's come back to bite me in a certain way, but I've told other folks things that, that you know, uh, they used it to try to use against me. You, you know, you can't trust everybody, but, you know, I trust her. I wouldn't have married her if I couldn't trust her. Amen. Amen. I wouldn't still be married if I couldn't trust her. Amen. There'd be troubles there. Amen. Amen. But you can turn to him because you can trust the Lord. Simon says in John chapter 6, verse 68, the Lord turns to him as, as in verse 66, there was a whole pile that went away. I believe it was 70 disciples that had turned away from the Lord there that day. And the Lord turns to the others and he says, Hey, guys, will you go away also? And Simon says, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. You know, if you're going to turn to somebody, my question is that is, who are you going to turn to that's better than turning to Christ? Who are you going to turn to that's better to turn to than the Lord himself? He's the one that we need that, that avenue of prayer always open. He's the one that we need to be talking to. He's the one we need to be pouring it out to. It's safe. It's secure with him. So you ought to talk to him. You ought to turn to him. Amen? Amen. A lot of folks in these days and things that's going on, they need to learn to turn to the Lord. Amen. They'll tell their buddies. They'll tell Facebook. They'll tell everybody else. But they fail to take time to turn to the Lord. You know, I like, I like resources that can help me. I was piddling on the truck the other day, and uh, Quaid and, and uh, Corey's running around there, and... Uh, I, I, I don't even know if they know where a spark plug's located at in there. <laughs> so I didn't turn to them about how to do something that they have no idea what I'm doing. I'm going to turn somebody knows what everything is. See, I can turn myself to the Lord, and the Lord knows what I'm doing, but he knows what they're doing too. See, the psalms just started out in this thing talking about some of them folks and the mischief that they had going. said, how long will you imagine mischief against a man? There was folks plotting things against David. David, David. David goes to the Lord with this thing because he knows he can trust the Lord because he's one who cares. Turn to him. I, 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 can't, I can't stress that enough, and there's not enough verses to throw together to make that any more uh, of an emphasis as it can be. You just need to turn to him. Turn to the Lord. We need to trust the Lord. We turn and talk to everybody else. And everybody wants a friend, somebody they can talk to. Uh, can I tell you there's no friend that will stick closer to you than the Lord Jesus himself? Amen. And then the main, the main thought to this thing tonight is this. He said, trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your hearts before him. See, we just need to tell him all. Tell him all of it. Don't hold anything back. Just, just go to God in prayer and tell it all. What's bothering us, what we're worried about, what we're in fear of that could happen, that hadn't happened. You know, sometimes we worry about a whole lot of things that ain't going to happen, but we think they will. Amen. And we cause ourselves a lot of fret and a lot of trouble, and I'm guilty as anybody in the building. Amen. Amen. Uh, things that we think can happen, could happen, might happen. Uh, the devil wants to happen, but, uh, you know, if we'll talk to the Lord about it, God knows whether to happen or not. And God could turn that thing if it needs to be. Tell him. First John 4, 6 says, We are of God. He that, know, he, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Because we know God wouldn't talk to God. Amen. Job said it like this in verse uh, chapter 27, verse 29. It says, will God hear his cry when trouble cometh? This, that's what they're asking in Job. Do you, have y'all read the story of Job? Y'all know what happens in the end? <laughs> Didn't God hear him? Amen. When Job began to pour his heart out, instead of talking to the friends, Job began to pour his heart out to God and pray for his friends. God turned his troubles. 
see, what we need to do is not talk to all the friends about it. We need to talk to the Lord about it. I don't care whether you talk to your friends or not, but the first one you need to talk to is God. Amen. He ought to get it before anybody else gets it. Amen. Amen. Daniel 9, 17 says, Now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. See, we need to tell the Lord all about it. I was in here walking around telling the Lord all about it a little earlier. And that some folk might want to be a little bit concerned because these folks that should be in some of these seats that I was telling the Lord about it earlier. Breaks my heart, hurts me, Amen. worries me. So I, didn't, I didn't go tell everybody else. I just tell it to the Lord, and I'm going to let the Lord take care of it. Yep. Let the Lord work on things. Let the Lord deal with things. Amen. I understand pastoral work. I know that part of it. But first, before I do anything about it, I need to tell him about it. Amen. Talk to the Lord about it. Say, Lord, I, we need some help. Amen. Amen. God, the God of the hills, the God that owns all the cattle of the hills, the God that knows where everybody is and what's going on with everything. Hey, listen, talk to him. Let him give us leadership and guidance. Amen. We need to tell it all to him. We need to tell him all of our sorrows. Because yep. he can help. And he cares. Amen. Remember Psalm 73 has that famous verse in there that's been used by many through the years. Dr. Seitler probably penned it the best and uh, preached it the best was God can. God can furnish a table in the wilderness. And since God can furnish a table in the wilderness, what we got to worry about? Amen. Since God can rain down manna from heaven yep. and bring in the quail by the blow of the wind... Smite a rock and give forth water in a dry and a barren place. Amen. Since God can do that, why don't we just tell God about our problems? Amen. Why don't we just give God all of our sorrows? Bear our heart. Pour it all out before the Lord. We've got away from that in the days that we live. We've got a one, two, three prayer, and I'm not talking about just salvation stuff. Uh, uh, Christians has got as bad in their prayer time with God as a sinner is and, and, and what's told in his salvational prayer. It's simple to get in, but there's a lot more need to be said once we get in. Right. Amen. We need, to, we need to pour out our sorrows before the Lord and, and let God know what's bothering us, what's breaking us, what's bearing down on us, what's got us burdened to the point we can't go and smile. Amen. We need to pour out our sorrows and our sadness before the Lord. We need to pour out our situations before the Lord. God knows the complexness of our situations. God knows how what we need and how bad it is we need it and what we can't provide of ourselves. God knows about all our situation. God knows it all. Amen. God knows our sorrows. God knows our situations. God knows our sins. It's amazing how folks put on a facade, nice good looking coat, a pretty tie, come to church and we look like we're sinless. Boy, it looks so good going to church. We look like we hadn't even known what a sin was. But yet we all have things in our hearts that we need to deal with before the Lord. Amen. Confessing our sins before him. Because he's faithful and just to forgive them. Hey, and cleanse us. That means we can get clean before the Lord. Where we can come to the Lord. A lot of folk won't confess their sins. Man, I could stand here tonight and go through a whole list of sins. I mean, there's, there's so many different sins. We could start on the Ten Commandments. And that would be a good place to start. To have no other gods before him. Nothing should come before God. Amen. God ought to always have first place in our life. Amen. Not to... Not to love any other gods, but to put him first and foremost in our life. So many people today has put other things in, in place of where God should be. The sports world making our silver. Amen. All these other kind of things that comes before us and the Lord, that, that's sinful stuff. Right. Amen. Our sorriness or slackfulness or slothfulness, the lack of doing what we know we should be and can be doing for the glory of God. 
Amen. You know, just because folks aren't accepting Christ as their Savior doesn't mean we're not supposed to still present the gospel to them. Amen. Amen. Our, our slothfulness in, 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 in the things of God, not just church attendance. Man, we've got so bad with that one. And nobody, nobody, nobody comes and confesses, Lord, I'm sorry, I just flat laid out of church. Forgive me, Lord. Because we don't view that as a sin anymore. You know, if I can come, I can come. Good, that's fine. That, well, but if I can't come, then so be it. But it ain't no big deal, you know. I mean, it's my time. No, it ain't. It's God's time. Amen. Amen. God's, God's the one that calls the assembly of the brethren together. Hey, and we're supposed to be doing so much the more as we see the day approaching. Amen. And now you can't hardly get folks to come Sunday night and Wednesday night. Amen. It, it's wrong. It bothers. It's a sin to miss God's house when we can be there. Amen. And folks today don't want to find a place of prayer and confess and pour out their heart to God because God's going to deal with that thing. And they know they gotta they gotta confess. I, I sinned, I, I failed, I come short. God help us to care enough to confess. We need to tell it to him. God knows about our sorrows. God knows about our sadness. God knows about our situations. God knows about our sins. And we should bring to him our salutations, our, our praises and our worship. Why, God knows I love him. You know, that sounds like a man to his wife, don't it? Why, she knows I love her. I don't have to tell her that all the time. You're an idiot. If that's what a man thinks, he's an idiot. Amen. He ought to tell his wife he loves her. Let her, let her know that he loves her. Absolutely. Amen. One fellow said, well, I told her that when I got married to her. If it changes, I'll tell her it's different. <laughs> uh, you know, that's probably one of the best set of words a man can use to his wife. Amen. I love you. Reminds, reminds the freshness of his heart to her heart. Amen. What about the Lord? Every once in a while we ought to tell him we love him. Amen. I, I picked up my old Bible uh, this morning, I guess it was, and was, was looking at it and reading it, and I, I, I love this one. But that old one, I've I, I done a lot of valley walking with it. I've done a lot of trouble walking with it. And God spoke to me much out of it. And it's just so precious to me. And uh, you can think whatever you want to. I don't care. I just want the Lord to know I love him. Amen. Well, that don't do nothing for you. But that's all right. It does something for me. I, I can't walk up to Jesus in the flesh today and kiss his hands and kiss his feet. But I can kiss his word. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. See, we, we've, got so, we've got so superficial with some of this other stuff, we're we, we too, we too scared to be sensual anymore with God. Amen. Men can't let our reputation of toughness be uh, bothered. I mean, we've got to let everybody know we're tough. We're tough. Well, it's because you said you love the, uh, the Lord or you love your wife. That don't mean you ain't tough no more, does it? I mean, God himself said he loved us. Amen. Ain't nobody tougher. Amen. 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 Ain't nobody else been able to go out in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights without food and water and uh, come out of that and fight the devil and whip him. Amen. Yet he lets us know he loves us. Amen. He'll tell us he loves us. Amen. 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 <laughs> Ain't nobody no tougher than he is. Take nails in his hands and nails in his feet and the flesh been ripped, slap off his body, crowned with a mockery of crowns of thorns in his head. And yet he says, Father, forgive him. Amen. What he's saying is, I love him. Amen. See, he loves it. Wasn't, it wasn't them nails hung him to the cross. It was his love for sinners is what held him to that cross. We need to tell him all. Our sorrows, our sadness, our situations. We need to tell him about our sins. 
We need to give salutations to him. Tell him about our storms, all these things that's going on. See, a lot of folk won't admit their storms because they, they don't want to admit that they can't handle it. You know, that's one thing I'll give old Simon Peter and that bunch out yonder. They did not have a problem crying out and said, Hey, help us, Lord. We're going to sink. Bunch of old tough sailors. And I don't know about y'all, but them sailor boys, they're pretty tough. My papa was one. He pretty tough. They pretty tough. But they didn't have a problem crying out to the Lord when they realized they was a sinking. Amen. Say, hey, Lord, <laughs> the boats are sinking. What you doing down here sleep? Might ought to get up and help us a little bit. We, we, we throw in the water out as fast as we can, but it ain't fast enough. We need some help. There's a lot to study on that, you know, how, how the Lord's down there in the hold of the boat, but yet they're saying it's filling up and they're sinking. If the boat's filling up, why is he not floating? <laughs> you ever thought about that? If that boat's filling up, why the Lord didn't float on up there where they was at? It ain't, it ain't plumb filled up yet. See, sometimes our storms are a lot worse in our eyes than they are in his. Right. But you still need to tell him. See, we need to tell him all. Just tell it all to him. Psalm 40, verse 1, the Bible says, To the chief musician, a psalm of David, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined, inclined unto me and heard my cry. Amen. Amen. Psalm 6, verse 9, The Lord hath heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Psalm 34, 15, the eyes of the Lord upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. What are you trying to do, preacher? The Bible told me that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm trying to give you some faith so you'll call on him. I'm trying to show us that in the scriptures he says he will hear our prayers. He will hear our cries. He will hear our calls for him. We need to do more of it since he's willing to hear. Amen. Amen. He's, he's willing to sit down and listen. He didn't say, hey, wait a minute. I'll get back to you in a little bit. Click. Nope. Or when you called him, the phone didn't come back and say, I'll call you back later. You know, one of them automatic generated text. Called my brother earlier today, and when I called him, the text thing come back to me and said, I'll call you back later. Well, he did, and I was busy. You don't have that when you call on God. Amen. See, we need to go to God and tell it all. We need to learn to pour out our hearts unto him again. Amen. We've got calloused. We've got reserved. You know, some places are so dignified that they don't want to see tears or hear anybody crying out to God. i tell you what I want. I want to hear somebody with a good old-fashioned Holy Ghost cry for God. You know, I believe I believe that the Lord the Lord <clears throat> sees and hears our emotions. Amen. And if it don't bother you enough to be emotional, it ain't bothering you yet. Amen. You you ask the young, uh, uh, how you feel? Oh, I'm I'm I, I, my back hurts. But if they go, oh, my back is hurting. You think there's a little more to it then, ain't there? Now, some of them will put on a little play acting, and you can figure that out. <clears throat> but see, the Lord knows all truth, so he can tell when something really troubles us to the point we will literally just pour ourselves out before the Lord. Uh, the scripture gives us several good examples. There's a lady in 1 Samuel that goes to God, and she pours out her heart to God so much that the preacher says something about, uh, <clears throat> Woman, you drunk. Amen. Her name was Hannah. Other ladies were having children, and she was bare, and she wasn't able to have a child, and she wanted to have a child, and she was uh, concerned why she couldn't have a child. And she went to God and poured her heart out to God so, so strongly, so emotionally, and her pouring her heart out that the preacher thought she was drunk. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's some pretty serious praying, ain't it? Amen. To where the preacher look over and think, oh, she's drunk. Get to praying so hard, he'd say, hmm. She had 
she had something to drink or smoke, what's wrong with her? See, we don't pour out our hearts like that anymore. When we get to a terribly sad situation, oftentimes we'll be willing to pour our hearts out to God. But when we see the sin sickness of the world, we've gotten so hardened, we've gotten so calloused that it doesn't trouble us no more. We've seen so many things, and that's the danger of the of the of the little war games that the kids play. They see this death, they see this destruction, they see these bodies torn apart and the blood squirts everywhere. They get used to seeing that to where a real deal don't bother them no more. They get hardened to it. That's the whole purpose behind it. You need to understand there's a purpose behind these things. Get us cold, get us callous. We we see those things and think, well, there ain't nothing real about death anyway. They just they just died and they ain't no more. And see, when they teach you evolution and the kids begin to believe that mess that they teach in school because they don't come to Sunday school and they don't get taught right, Amen. they get cold to the realities of life. We need we need folks that'll get tore up about sin. Amen. Not just mine. But I ought to be bothered about yours. We get an eye of what's going on in our nation. It ought to break our hearts to see a nation that was once known by the world as one nation under God, individable. Can you tell what that means? Indivisible? Don't that mean undividable? It means they can't get us divided. What they done? They've divided us. Because we're not one nation under God. We've got many little gods across the land that's taken up and taken control of people's minds and their lives. And some people are so cold and callous that things don't bother anymore. Can I, can I beg on you tonight to begin to help us pray that people's sorrows, people's sadness, people's situation, people's sin, not just ours, but people's sin should bother us. You know, I have in the old Bible that I was talking about earlier, I have in the back of it, uh, they was the Dunn brothers had put together a, a prayer for revival, and, and, and I can turn to it there. And one of the things that it says in that is to pray that God would break our hearts. As a pastor, I stand and I preach and I beg and I plead, and Miss Angela plays, and we do invitation, and we look for folks that God's dealt with to come to an altar, and I can see the grimace in their face. I can see them squeezing against the chairs or the pews it used to be and you can watch their knuckles turn white and you can see they're trying to resist the call of God in their heart and other folks is just I wish you'd hurry up shut up so I can go eat I'm about to starve you know we got to get our Bibles up we got to get our books put away we got to get our coats on we got to make sure we're ready to leave right. while somebody in the midst is going to walk out the door and it could be the last time they may never come back under the hearing of old-fashioned Bible preaching. I don't have a lick of confidence in my preaching, but I got a lot of confidence in that word. Amen. A lot. I'm a firm believer in that word. I believe that that word is what pierces the heart. I believe the Holy Ghost of God with the, with the word of God works into the heart of those people that are lost and undone, and that's what does a work in their heart. That's what does a drawing. But I also know that the praying of God's people will touch people's heart too. See, if we are concerned enough about them then we get in an old-fashioned altar and pray for them, there's power in prayer. You believe that? Amen. Does anybody in here believe there's power in prayer? Amen. Then why don't we? When we have sinners in the building and the preacher's preaching and trying to reach them and they need to come and give their heart to God, why does it not disturb us to the point we will pour out our hearts. If we were seeing someone burning in a literal fire and we had the ability to save them, 
which I had in many years, we would do everything within our power to drag them out. I remember one morning early on Greenbrier Road, I was traveling out Greenbrier Road. It was early in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning or so. I saw some smoke, and I was concerned about it, so I turned and went in that direction. And when I got over there, there was a house fully involved. And I called for the fire department. I'd done everything I could to get some help there. It was such a, a the fire was so uh, advanced in that home that there was no way that I could go in there in just my uniform I had on. I couldn't do it. I, I would not have made it in and made it out. I didn't know whether there's anybody in there or not. I had no idea. It was 4 o'clock in the morning, probably so, but I, I didn't know. But then I began to get a smell. I didn't know the people that lived there. I had no, no idea who that was that lived in that home. There was an old man that tried to get out the back, and he couldn't get out the back, so he went and he crawled up under the bed at the back. And he thought that maybe he could find some safety and security there because they tell you to go low in the fire. And he crawled up under that bed, and he did not know that the house was going to do as it did and consume him while he was under that bed. I didn't know that guy, but it broke my heart. Because I got to thinking about, here's a here's an 80-some-year-old man that's crawled up under a bed. He is nearly 90, and uh, he crawled up on that bed for safety, but he didn't get out. He, he couldn't get out of there. And there was another man in the home that was able to get out the other doors, but I got to thinking about the pain and the suffering that that gentleman had to go through in his death. I hope his heart failed him fast so that he would not have to feel any of that pain. But I, I sat there and I watched him work it and I thought about that and I said, man, if I'd have come through here just a little bit earlier, Mike could have helped that guy. Mike could have got the fire department there quicker and they'd been able to rescue him. That wrenches in our hearts. It, 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 it stirs us deep inside our bosoms. It, it tears us apart to think of someone burning alive like that. Yet, there's folks that will go to hell and burn for all eternity that have been inside our facility. And we shed not one tear for them. We didn't pour out our hearts to God because we didn't have no heart in it. What am I saying to us tonight? I'm saying to us, we need God to do a work in our hearts. Not you, our heart. The whole bunch. We all need to be more concerned and more caring about the day that we live in and the folks that will die and go to a devil's hell without God. Some of them comes in and out of our midst. Some of them's connected to our friends and our family. What we need to do is learn to pour our heart out to God for them. Tell you what we need to pray for. We need to pray God send an old-fashioned burden for sinners on Tabernacle Baptist Church. Pray God just pour out a burden so strong on the preacher so that his heart will be wrenched. His heart will be poured out to God for those that's going to die and go to hell. Folks, that's what we're here for. We're not here to build no kingdoms or monstrosities or fat bank accounts. We're here to reach sinners before we leave here. Amen. Many of people had ignorance concerning the eclipse and they thought maybe the rapture's going to take place. And then I find out somebody says, no, that was supposed to be the prelude to it. It's supposed to come in 40 days. I got news for you. The scripture says, man will not know the day nor the hour you're not going to be able to calculate when the rapture is going to take place. Amen. So quit trying. Amen. Be ready today. Because you don't know. Today could be the day. He could come back tonight. Right now he could come. Mm -hmm. We don't know, but until he does, we're to try to reach sinners for Jesus' sake. God give us, God give us a burden for sinners. Amen. Maybe, maybe God needs to in the middle of our sleep of a night, just wake us up seeing them burning in a devil's hell so that we can fall on our face and pour our heart out to God over their sin and ours. We 
talk about sins. <clears throat> Most folk think of the adulteries and the drunkards and the killings and the crimes against children and all these other horrible sins. But what about the sins of the church? A careless heart in the church. Where it comes to where it don't really matter, you know. I mean, it's just Wednesday night, ain't it? No big deal, just Wednesday night. Sunday night, just no big deal. Well, I mean, if I miss Sunday, what's that to, you know? But there's folks that come that still don't get in. You can come, sit, and be part of the service, but are you worshiping the Lord? Are you letting the Lord minister to your heart? Are you letting the Lord talk to you out of the Scripture? See, I've had folks at the door, many of folks would tell me that the Lord spoke to them about this, and I'm thinking, that wasn't in my notes. What do you mean? I didn't say nothing to him, but I'm thinking, what do you mean God spoke to you about such and such? I didn't say that. What's that mean? That means God was speaking to their open heart. God can take the scriptures and use it in many different ways to many different needs. He's able to do that. He can feed the multitude with just a little bit. Amen. God help us. To pour our heart out to him. Been talking with Brother Fred, and we've been dealing with this topic for some time now. He's got a set for prayer revival next week. He's looking for God to do a great work in his church and in his people. But it ain't just his little church that needs revival of prayer, it's every church in America. Asia, or anywhere else in this world. We need a revival of prayer to where we will pour our hearts out to the God of heaven. We need, we need prayer where folks would get so burdened and they'll get down before God. They can't say much, but God knows the heart. Some of the best praying as far as effective praying that I've ever done, I couldn't get the words out. That's where he talks about how that the Holy Ghost can make utterance for us. We may not know exactly how to say or what to say, but pouring our heart out before the Lord, he knows. You know, if you pour it all out there, it, it, it's hard to dis discern one little old thing. It's all poured out. But see, God's able to discern everything about it. May God help us to pour our hearts out before him, not everybody else. And it's safe to do that, children. You need to find you a place where you can get whenever to where you can pour your heart out to the God of heaven, whether it's... Uh, I, had a, I had a preacher friend that used to get out in the morning. He'd go get his coffee and his, and his biscuit, and he'd pull up to a certain place he had there, and he'd sit there, and he'd read his Bible. He'd just... Eat his, eat his uh, biscuit and drink his coffee. And there he'd spend his time talking to the Lord and letting the Lord talk back to him through the scriptures. We're getting so far from those days. You know, the sad thing is God's got a way of laying you down to where you'll pour out your heart. I've had a couple of episodes through the years in my life to where I couldn't go and do it. 2014, I blowed out those two discs, finally quit on me and uh, I couldn't get up. I couldn't go. I couldn't do anything. It was a time where the Lord laid me down. And at first, I didn't understand. I thought, Lord, I need to be busy. I need to be doing stuff. But there is no business to be done until we've done business with him. If David had walked off of that mountainside down into that valley and had not been communing and, 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 and conversing with God, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have known much about what to do when he got down there in the bottom of that valley. But he'd done been with God. He'd done been in some battles. He'd done seen some victories. And when God stirred his heart to defend Israel, well, see, it wasn't all about King Saul's name. It wasn't all about Israel's name. David said to him, said, he's defied our God. And that's what we need, to, we need to understand. This thing that's going on about us, it's about God. For his sake, we need to do things. 
There's sinners that need to be. You realize there's sinners that'll go to hell that Jesus Christ paid a sinful, uh, paid paid their sinful life and paid a painful death for them so they could go to heaven, but they don't know the answers to it. They're not saved. They've not accepted Christ and what He's done. They've not. They don't understand things. They need some of us to explain to them. Tell them a little bit about Jesus. Amen. He can save old wretched sinners. He can, he can save youngins. I, I've, I've heard of them very young being saved. Brother Jeremy, I think, was five years old when the Lord saved him. And uh, God's used him greatly in his life. What a, what a blessing. That's the best thing to do is get them, get them under the hearing of God's word young. And we've got, we've got some youngins around connected to the church that, that needs to hear and accept Christ as their Savior. Amen. God, help us that their image be burnt in our hearts, that we can find a place to pour our heart out before the Lord and watch them get born again. Amen. Let's pour our hearts out to God. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you tonight. Thank you for the time to gather. Thank you for these that are able to gather with us, and I pray that, Lord, you touch each heart and help us. Lord, I, I, I meant what we said during our preaching. You know that I mean it, Lord. We need the burden. For our church, we need a burden for those that are lost. And I pray that, God, you'll help us to have that burden. Lord, that we might do more in these days. Lord, not just what we used to do or what we've had done, but, Lord, let us do more. Give us the strength. God, we need the healing hand of you upon us. Most of our folks have been through some sicknesses that's taken away some of our strength, and we need you to touch us and give us that strength. We need you to give us that help that we'll be able to go forth and do what your will is in our life. I pray, Lord, you'll help our church meet the needs of it. Take these thoughts tonight. I pray for Jesus' sake, for sinners' sake, we do humbly ask. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, we'll take a few prayer requests and uh, have those for our prayer time. Um, as, as normal, continue to pray for Miss Darlene and Brother Robert. Continue to pray uh, for Miss Nikki and uh, her needs and the, uh, the lady that we had been going around at Alexander that was being prayed for, the, the lady passed on. So pray for the family uh, of that one uh, that everybody was lifting up and went to. Angelica. Uh, huh, Angelica, yeah. She went to uh, Nashville or that hospital out there, and they was trying to help. But the uh, Lord saw fit to take her home, so pray for the family and his grace for them, so lift that up. Um, pray about the meeting next week. Please pray that God would help me as I preach uh, next week uh, for Brother Fred, and uh, he'll have a, a prayer revival starting Sunday, and he'll go through Wednesday. I'll be doing a closing message on Wednesday, so uh, much prayer, much prayer needed for that, and uh, pray the Lord to help me know exactly what he wants for that to be a blessing and a help to their congregation. Uh, continue to pray for Miss Ann's nephew's family, uh, Mark's family out there that lost him uh, here a few weeks ago. Please lift that up in prayer and pray for them. Mark was a good one. I, I, I wished he hadn't lived in Texas. I wished he was here. But uh, him and Beverly were sweet folks. And just pray for Beverly and others, that uh, uh, the youngins and all, that the Lord would help them uh, in that loss of a loved one. So remember that. All right. Uh, any other requests, things we need to mention? Yes, ma'am. Oh, my. All right, let's remember Miss Kathy, isn't it? Yes, Kathy. Remember Miss Kathy. She's dealing with uh, pneumonia there, a friend to Granny and their family. So lift that up. Uh, pray much for them. Pray for Miss Judy. She's still dealing with some things with her body. Uh, she goes back to the neurologist at the, toward the end of the month to check the neck and see what, how everything did from the surgery. Uh, Brittany's had some tests run so far. Those who have come back give them a little bit of wisdom on what needs to be done uh, to help her with her body. But then... Uh, she'll do a follow-up with the neuro doctor to see what they're going to do about uh, the spinal leaks, which is probably there again. So that's probably, I uh, feel sure they're going to be doing that surgery again for her real soon. Uh, so pray they can get that worked out and get her in there and get that fixed completely this time. It's nothing unusual. The doctor told her uh, then when they done this past procedure that they would probably, uh, most likely, they have to go in a second time to complete it. Um, so... 
you know, just pray that they can get that fixed for her and uh, be able to get her back to where she can do again. She's out of work again, so uh, continue to pray for her and the family in that, all right? Anything else, Brother Clarence? All right, pray for Miss Betty Manfredi. The Lord touch and help her. Yes, ma'am. I've got a couple. Um, Peggy's uh, daughter, Pounds, is getting her uh, job jerked out from under her by the end of the month. And um, she's really struggling with it. Uh, and her grandson, which is Waylon, is in the, was in the hospital. I don't know if he got to come home today, but he had some... Um, trouble with his oxygen going down. Um, they were actually going to intubate him um, two days ago, but uh, hmm. he came back up to remember Waylon and remember Pounds as she tries to, to find a job. Um, she's looking at one, but it's going to be down in um, Lincolnton, and she lives here in Statesville, so um, it's going to be very hard on her, but just help her. Our commute, yes, ma'am. She just signed a new leash on her trailer, I mean, on the, the apartment she's got, so, you know, she's really struggling. And Michael just had surgery yesterday and today on just the skin cancer that mm -hmm. showed up on All him. Right. Um, uh, he has to be on light duty for the next month because of the one on his shoulder and his arm. So just remember them, and I want you to just, I, I just want to praise God. I don't know if anybody noticed the picture on the table up here. I bought that today at Hobby Lobby. When I saw it, it's a picture and it's got a hole in it. And uh, coming down the road, I got to thinking, there's a broken vessel, but it's, it's, it's been used. Mm -hmm. And I just, me and the Lord really had a good old time from Lobby Hobby here to the church when I came in here. But, Amen. You know, I know how it is to be broken. Mm -hmm. and I know that God's trying to use me, and I'm trying to get me out of the way so He will use me. Amen. And like I say, the service we had yesterday at Beulah, it was such a, it was such a heart wrenching service, and I just praise God that He still is a businessman. Amen. Amen. I want to do something for our church. I want to serve. I want to serve my church. I want to serve God through my church. Amen. So y'all just pray for me. But Amen. That Jay, every time I see it, I, I, just, I hope everybody will get that picture. Because that's a broken vessel. Mm -hmm. But it can be used. It's beautiful. And it can be used. Sometimes it has to be broken so to pour out. Amen. That's a good thing. Yes, sir. Our Roy Leonard says to pray for Nikki's cousin, Rachel. Okay. And Miss Tammy says to pray for her mom. Huh? Miss Tammy says to pray for her mom. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. We just mentioned her. Oh. Miss Darlene. Yes, ma'am. Remember uh, Angie and Derek and Kate. Um, it's been rough the last couple of weeks. Um, <clears throat> coming up a year on the 15th. A lot of struggle emotionally um, for other needs as well. Um, it's uh, got an offer on the house, so Derek's going to be looking for a place. So just need to pray that he finds the right place. Amen. And where it needs to be, and whether he's going to rent or buy, he's not sure yet. And just the whole situation. Um, and remember a guy, my, a guy at work, good Christian guy, um, one of our agents, Corey. I didn't ask him that. I can't remember the name of the church, but he lives out in the Hickory Catawba, somewhere area. But their pastor has um, decided the Lord's called him to go back into the Army as a chaplain. He used to be in the Army anyway. So they're looking for a new pastor and um, everything. So just pray for that church accordingly to it. New stats is about 1,200 a month are leaving. Across the country, about 1,200 preachers a month leaving. So it's 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 tough. At least he's going into another field and not getting out of them. Right. 
ministry. So praise the Lord for that. All right, remember those that Miss Angela mentioned? And pray much about that. I, uh, I'm trying to get used to saying Cade instead of baby Cade because we've always called him that. But uh, pray for Cade. He's, uh, he's coming up. He's getting some years on him. And uh, he's going to need to come to know the Lord soon. So pray that God will deal with his heart. And the Lord will make everything. God knows how to work all that out. So be, be, be much concerned about that situation and uh, Angie and Derek and all that they're dealing with. Lord knows all their different dealings, but uh, as she mentioned, it's coming up on a year since Jude uh, was killed, uh, and that that's tough. That's a life changer. It's, it's terrible. Um, so please pray much for that. Uh, I, can't, I can't imagine the pain there. Uh, you know, an accident or a natural death is terrible to deal with, uh, but when there's some fault there it, it makes it it increases the angers so uh, much prayer needed there all right anyone else got a request tonight miss okay I've spoken and remember our leaders and israel and the jews and the well i think you mentioned school kids all the school kids and yeah i'm like sue i pray about this stuff but if i'm not I asked the Lord to show me what I needed to do to help get folks in. If I'm not praying about it in the right direction, then give me some help to show me. I Amen. keep asking him, but either I'm not getting it in or, or, or it's not. Uh, any, any, anyway, I don't feel like I'm really getting anywhere as, as of right now. But I am very concerned about this church, and I do think the Lord meant for it to grow. Amen. But you, how do you get them in? Are you supposed to go out and get them by the hair of the head and drag them in? I, I shall plead the fifth. <laughs> <sighs> I understand, Miss Kay. Thank you for your labors. And, and I know I'm, that tonight we're preaching to the choir, but y'all got to remember, y'all ain't the only ones that's hearing this, okay? So uh, it's going out to the world and a lot of folks here, there's a lot of folks watching that you don't know they're watching. There's no indicators on there, but we've heard back from other people that they're watching. So the Lord's the Lord's using this church not just for us, but to broadcast and help others. So uh, God help us, amen, to be able to reach folks and make a difference in their lives. Remember amen. Paul and Janet and, and uh, Dana called yesterday, and she named a whole lot of people that was needing prayer. I can't remember who all of them are, but the Lord knows who they well, are. So. Lord knows Dina's list. Amen. Absolutely. So remember them and remember Bert. He had surgery this morning or was supposed to have. I haven't heard anything today. So so I don't, not, don't know how he's doing, but just remember him. Okay. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Remember that. Pretty much for Nathan. 21 years old today. Mm. 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 He's legal. <laughs> Amen. But pray for him. Seriously. That's a good request, Corey. Pray for your brother that the Lord would give him direction and leadership in his life and uh, how, how and which way to go with things. Amen. Amen. And uh, I believe he wants that. I believe he wants God's direction. So uh, let's help pray for these young folks. Amen. Amen. Corey will be 18 in, in the summer. He'll be legal. Amen. Y'all know what that means, don't you? I can take him out in the backyard and just whoop him up. Really. I'm just kidding. All right. Any other requests this evening before we pray and dismiss? Burt County. Turned upside down. And just remember the kids that have to ride them. Amen. The drivers that they'll have to send. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Did you mention Doug Thompson? I did not. Brother Doug Thompson preaches revival yearly for harvest over here. Uh, he was in his camper. He had just picked up his motor home is what it is. Uh, I guess it had been getting work done on anyway. He just picked it up. He was parked at a church, and it burned up. Uh, it consumed uh, the back half. Is is burnt to a crisp. 
Uh, thank the Lord he was able to get out of it when the fire started. Uh, but it scarred the side of the church building where he was parked at. So uh, pray for him. Homeless, that's the way they travel and do ministry across the country. So uh, pray for him and, and God's replacement for that and the church. Let everything get took care of there. So remember Brother Doug. He's a good brother. Uh, they have him over here. Brother Gant has him over here to harvest every year. And uh, he's a good brother. He's, he's out there trying to help and serve the Lord. So pray much for him. All right. Anyone else? Amen. Pray much for our church. God help us to grow. Pray for the Sunday schools, the services, the folks connected. Amen. God would move and help. Uh, I know some work related, some medical relations to why they're not able to be here. We understand some of those. But, uh, there is a lot of folks that could be here that are not. Amen. So just pray the Lord will deal with their heart. It's, it's a hard thing. We can fuss at them all we want to, but uh, it needs to be something in the heart. You know, that don't take away us witnessing and uh, praying with and for them, but uh, it's got to be a heart thing. God's got to do a work in their heart. Uh, listen, God hasn't done a work in my heart. My head would quit here a long time ago. I'm not talking about here. I mean here in the work period. Uh, the head would have quit a long time ago, but the heart won't let me. So I thank God for that, that he's, uh, he's kept me going through the years, uh, eight years in evangelism, and then uh, the years I spent before that. I've been, I've been preaching a long time. I got a uh, Miss Alton, Miss Ann, uh, gave me a clip out of Grandma's Bible. She has one of Grandma's Bibles, and had one of the notes in there where Grandma took down a message I preached in 1984 uh, at Redemption. So I've been around this thing a lot longer than what uh, we talk about, but uh, I appreciate the Lord keeping us in the ministry, keeping us close and, and helping us through the years. We've seen some stuff. I, I was going through the old Bible today and seen where we'd uh, done meetings with Brother Lockhart and we'd done a meeting out in Kentucky and uh, done a meeting down in Florida and out of those, uh, one of those meetings, we've seen eight folk get saved that week. And, you know, it's just a blessing to be able to go back and look at what God has done. And we need that encouragement from time to time. Amen? So I thank the Lord for that. That's why I'm so much about using this for what you need to, but you need a Bible. Because that Bible's got stuff in there that where God spoke to you and worked in your life that uh, this thing here don't do it no good. That's just a tool I use to. Uh, ready to grab some information, amen. Helps me with my forgetful mind and I can pull up scriptures quicker and easier. So, all right, let's pray. Ask the Lord to help us. He knows these needs and requests that's been mentioned tonight. And uh, let's ask the Lord to, to help us with each of those, amen. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we do humbly pray before you tonight. We Lord, we've not much. We know that in our heart who we are, but Lord, through Jesus, we're your sons. And uh, through the blood, we come to you tonight and ask you to give ear to our supplication. Lord, the verses, many several verses we mentioned tonight, how that we know you hear our prayers. And God, we're offering up these requests to you tonight. Many's in big need. Lord, I pray, uh, Lord, for Miss Peggy's daughter, Pam, that God, you'd help her with her job and getting relocated with that. And, uh, Lord, that you'd give uh, wisdom to her and open the doors that you would have uh, be open for her. So please just help her with that situation. And, Lord, we pray for Waylon. And, uh, Lord, we just pray you'd continually to touch his little body, give him healing, give him help. You know what's wrong. I ask God that you'd fix him, heal him up completely, uh, Lord, and that you would get all the honor and you'd get the glory and the praise out of it. We pray for Michael, Lord, as he heals up from his surgery. We pray that they were able to get all those uh, all that out that needs to be and uh, pray that his body will heal up accordingly and uh, give him strength and help him to be obedient to the will and the way of the doctors there and to follow your leadership as well. Lord, we pray you to have your will and help there. Pray for uh, Rachel, uh, Lord, that you'd, you'd move in, in that need there. Uh, Lord, you know what uh, is going on in her life and, and the, the troubles and trials that folks are going through. So, we ask you to help. And Miss Darlene, God, she sure needs your special touch. And we pray for her and uh, ask for her family that God you touch and help them and minister to them and in them and through them. Uh, Lord, may all things be done in a way that you get the honor, the glory, and the praise. 
Uh, but, Lord, we do ask that you touch and help Darlene to get straightened out and to be able to be with us. Lord, you know we sure do miss her, Brother Robert, and the rest of the family. Pray that you touch and help them. Pray for Angie and Derek tonight. God, you know there's great needs there uh, in many different areas. And, Lord, we just ask that you would move. Lord, as this company's gathered together tonight and agreeing together tonight, that, Lord, you'd do a work in Angie and Derek's lives and help them. I know that, uh, Lord, it's tough coming up on this anniversary of losing Jude. And I can't imagine that, but God, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you, and I know you know exactly what it's all about, you know what they're going through, and uh, Lord Jesus, you, you're, you're a high priest that is touched with our pains and suffering, and we pray that you'd help uh, Angie and Derek in this situation, pray that you'd uh, meet their other needs that's in their life, God, that you'd give them direction and guidance, draw them up close to you, and Lord, pray that you'd give uh, Derek wisdom and uh, where to relocate and sell in the house and May all that go according to your plan, and uh, may the prosperity uh, be a blessing in their life, that they would use it for your honor and your glory. Lord, we pray for Dina. Lord, you know the list that she spoke with Miss Kay about, that God should answer it. Deal with each of those situations. Lord, you know each one and the needs there. So we ask you to help with Dina's list. We pray for Bert, that God you give him help and healing, and uh, may everything work right in the way that you'd see fit. And we pray that you'd help there. Pray for our church family. God, you know each one that's here. You know each one that should be here. And I pray that God should deal in their hearts. Lord, there's a lot of folks, as Miss Kay mentioned, uh, that we talk to. We try to encourage. We try to work with them to get them in here. But, Lord, in all of our talkings and all of our pleadings, uh, it doesn't seem to be working. They don't seem to be heeding. And, Father, we just pray that you'd go after them, that God should get a hold of their heart, that, God, you would do that work that needs to be done in their heart. I pray for the heart of this church, God, that you'd help us, Lord, to be broken for sinners. I pray, God, we need that in our lives. We need to, I don't want to be cold and calloused. I want to be, uh, Lord, aware that them sinners could die and go to a devil's hell and the pain, the suffering that they'd su suffer for all eternity. So please help us to do all that we can, Lord, in, in confessing our sins so that we'll be clean in the spirit and the power of God would be able to work and labor uh, through and uh, in us. And, uh, Lord, just help us to pour out our hearts to you and uh, help this church to come together and to grow. Lord, you laid in my heart. I felt sure it was of you that we'd have the theme this year to do so much to more as we see the day approaching. Uh, Lord, I pray you'd help us to do that, help us to do more. We ask that, God, you'd lead us and you'd guide us and you'd direct us in this and give us strength and help. Pray for the other request for Corey, his request for his brother, Lord, that you'd touch Nathan. God, guide his heart, lead him in the things that he needs to do uh, in his future life, Lord, that you'll, you'll help him as he goes forward and uh, bless him and watch him and guard him and keep him safe and keep him close to you. Pray for Corey as well. You'd use him for your honor and your glory. Touch his talents, Lord, that they'd be used to bring honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ, to be an uh, edification for the church. So we ask that, that you'd help us with that. Be with the other children, the grandchildren. Uh, other other children connected with the church, Lord, that needs to be saved. I pray you to help us. My God, please help us that we will be able to reach them. And, Lord, that the Spirit of God would have liberty in this place, that, uh, Lord, you'd move and work in the services in an old-fashioned, powerful way as you've done in days gone by. We pray for that kind of a revival of our hearts in the church. And, uh, Lord, there's many that needs to come to know you, and there's many that needs to get closer to you. So we pray that thy will would be done in all these areas. Help us now. Give us guidance. Lord, help everyone get home safe. And we thank you for each one that's here tonight. Pray that you'd bless them greatly for their uh, willingness and their sacrifice to come and be part of the service. We ask all these things in Christ's precious and powerful name. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen, amen. God bless you.